Life Audio. Hey, I'm Rob Tigan. And I'm Joanna Tigan. Rob and I have been married over 30 years and share an addiction to coffee, bookstores, and Christmas music. We often debate how many dogs are enough and who should win the voice every season. We're a neat freak married to a not-so-neat freak, an explorer to a homebody, and an introvert to a people person. But we do agree that our vows are for always, children are a gift, and prayer is powerful. Our hope through this podcast is that we can walk with you in caring for the soul of your family. Thanks for being here. Hi, friends. Thank you so much for joining us today for the Growing Home Together podcast. Now, I'm sure like most couples, when you stood up at the altar on your wedding day, you made vows to stick together for better and for worse for richer or poorer, and in sickness and in health. And maybe like many couples, your vow has been tested because one of you is suffering with an injury or an illness or a chronic condition that affects your lives every day. And the challenge of chronic pain puts a unique kind of stress on a marriage. And that stress can either pull you together and grow your relationship in new ways, or it can wear down the joy and the closeness that you share. Yeah, and that's why we are so glad to welcome today's guests, Chris and Jamie Bailey, back to our show. Uh, They have walked their own road of medical issues and chronic pain, and they offer unique insight into building a strong marriage in spite of it all. Chris and Jamie are professional counselors and marriage coaches. They have helped thousands of couples like you and me find healing and sustain joy together. Thank you, Chris and Jamie, for joining us today. Oh, it's a privilege. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, Chris and Jamie, it has been so great to get to know you over the past couple of years. Um, Would you be willing to share a little bit with everybody today about your marriage and what led you to partner together to help other couples thrive? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for me, it's very personal. I grew up in a pretty dysfunctional home and struggled a lot as a result of that. And just watching my parents, you know, go through a divorce and fight and battle addiction and remarriage and all of those things. And I went through a lot of it alone without feeling like I had any resources or or help. And then, of course, when I got married, you know, all of those issues, they don't ever come out until you're married. <laughs> right. you know? Or at least a lot of them come to the surface then. But I really, you know, remember growing up thinking, feeling so alone and not having any resources. And I always knew I wanted to be a people helper of some sort. But realizing, you know, as we both became, you know, counselors and we saw a lot of individuals and so many of them, I would say large majority of them that we were helping were all coming from broken homes. And we realize at some point we've got to get ahead of this issue. And it, this is a breakdown of the family and a breakdown of marriages. And if we can have strong couples, mm-hmm. strong marriages, you know, they're leading their kids with a great example. And that's what really led to starting Expedition Marriage. Is it's a platform to reach more couples, more than just one-on-one in the office, but also to help change society. Yeah, to make it to make an overall impact for the kingdom, mm-hmm. right? Because that's God's building blocks. When right. well, we both came to 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 become believers later in our t- late twenties, mm-hmm. and as we you know kind of went through uh, church and saw how the, the the body was hurting at the same rates as mm-hmm. the rest of the world, it just just didn't set well. It just no. it just God just told or, you know was pushing it on our hearts that no that. This this needs to be different, and yeah. so you know we really we need to be set apart as believers, yeah. especially in our marriages too. Especially the marriages, the, the, these building blocks that God had this this institution God ordained before you know government or even the church. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. I uh, I have to say, Chris and Jamie, that um, you two are some of my favorite people to follow on social media. <laughs> um, you guys always look like you're having so much fun and. Uh, there's so much joy um, in in what you guys do together, um, but you know I know you guys have shared um, that it's not always uh, been easy, um, and it's not always fun and games. Uh, and so, can right. you share um, some of the challenges you two have been facing together? 
Man. Oh boy, that's a list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a list, you know. I mean, early on in marriage, we had all those relationship issues to deal with, and I think dealing with so many of our our problems and having the humility mm-hmm. to grow in the Lord and to get the help we needed for our marriage, I think that that's the foundation, learning how to do hard things well. Yeah. And learning how to, you know, that stick to itiveness that we developed over the years, I think that is a a foundation to why we can handle, you know, right now the chronic pain that I deal with and and the hard things we have now because we've learned how to do hard together. And we learned how to lean in towards one another, to lean into the Lord and to know like where I can only get what I need from God, but also to know where, you know, some of the things God uses my husband to give me as well. And so learning that early on and all throughout our marriage is what's been foundational for us to keep that joy. But personally, you know, about, I guess, 17 years ago, I had a softball injury accident And I broke and sprained, messed up my ankle. And long story short, it resulted in, I've had nine surgeries on it Mm. through the years and lots, like all of 2019, spent the entirety of it in a cast, unable to walk, had a total ankle replacement and all kinds of things done. And ultimately my ankle said, we're done. I'm I'm done playing the surgery game. I'm done functioning. And so now I have a a device that I can't walk with without it. It's like a... um, customized prosthetic, but that it allows me to keep my leg. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's a lot of pain that comes with that. And we've had to adapt a lot of our lives. And then over the past several years, I've developed a neuromuscular um, issue, which they have not been able to diagnose. I've been to all kinds of teaching hospitals and different doctors and specialists. And basically, I deal with leg cramps all the time, muscle weakness. I can't lift my arms above my head. I can't hold anything overhand. And just going to bed at night, it takes, it's like a two hour process just to get out of pain to be able to fall asleep at night. And that's, that's really hard, it's especially. Fine. You know, I am a a fun person. I was an active <laughs> person. We used to go on hikes together and Bike love rides, doing playing racquetball. Yes, Ooh. we were very yeah. active. And you know, this chronic pain and this injury, like they have greatly altered our life. Mm-hmm. Well, it was an adjustment. And you know, in Rob, you said mentioned something. I think it was Rob that you know about the stress, and um, maybe it was Joanna. I don't know. One of you all said something <laughs> about the, the stress, you know, pulling you apart. And that was something that that we mm-hmm. re- learned early in the relationship, and actually was even an early prayer that that you know the stresses of life, you know, allow that to push us closer together. Mm-hmm. Versus ripping us apart, allow us to push, push those and drive us to God right. rather than isolate us and keep us alone. Because that's what a lot of, you know, of couples are challenged with is this isolation, is this you know, divine and conquer. And they feel on their own um, from each other, from God, and that they don't have the resources to handle things. Mm-hmm. So true. Yeah, that's, um, you know, I know for Joanna and I, I that has been, we've been married 30 years now. And that's always been our challenge. When I, when we first got married, I traveled a lot. And so we learned kind of that divide and conquer mentality just out of uh, survival. You know, I was gone a lot, right. Joanna was doing all of it. And then I'd enter mm-hmm. back in the home and she, you know, she's a lot better at managing things than I am. So the place ran <laughs> beautifully, <laughs> but, right. um, but yeah, it's uh, so, so when I, slowed down and I, you know, took a different job because I didn't want to be away from home so much. It was this whole re relearning how to work together, um, in Mm -hmm. life, whether, whether it's good or bad. Sure. Right. Right. Well, it's a dance, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, and it's constantly changing. What is it? The only, um, the only constant is change, right. Um, or something like that, Mm -hmm. whatever. But the point being is, yeah, we, we start to learn different steps and we get good at what we practice. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, we're going to get good at whatever it is that we're doing. And so when we start to shift back into it, it's, there's going to be some toes stepped on. Yeah. You can get good at living independently, even though you're together, if that's what you're practicing. Oh, sure. Yeah. We, well, that's actually the challenge for a lot of, of couples is we tend to practice the wrong 
things and get really good at it. <laughs> so, you know, and I'm not, I'm not saying what right, right, wrong or indifferent. It's just, that's the way that's it, reality. Yeah. That's the reality is, is what, whatever we're practicing, we're going to get good at. So we need to be intentional mm -hmm. at what it is we're practicing. And that's actually one of those things that Jamie, you were mentioning early in our relationship when we decided, Hey, look, we need to work on these things. They're just mm -hmm. the relational things. I was a very passive husband and, you know, there's, there's lots of things that we worked through. We just had to make that decision. We need, we need to be intentional mm -hmm. to, to do the right things, however uncomfortable, however we might not feel like doing mm -hmm. it at the time, you know, come here, we need to hug, don't oh, touch me, right? You know, that, <laughs> you know, and, and overcoming that and main, making a choice to have joy, yeah. making a choice to live the way that we did. You know how great your house looks and smells when it's just been cleaned? So fresh. And somehow, a clean house makes your head feel fresher, too. With a housekeeper from CARE, you can reset your house and your head as often as you like for less than you think. Find a great housekeeper, set a schedule that works for you, and check cleaning off your to-do list so you can put your mind to other, more fun things. Get the housekeeping help you need at CARE.com. Hey there, it's Nicole Eunice from the How to Study the Bible podcast, and I'd love to invite you to join us as we weekly discover a passage of God's Word together. From beginning to end, from principles to practicals, we are here to make sure that God's Word is powerful and relevant to your life. If that sounds like something you're looking for, I would love to invite you to subscribe. You can go to lifeaudio.com and search How to Study the Bible, and we'll see you there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, I know for us, we've, we've walked through seasons where Joanna was knocked down pretty hard with uh, health issues and with depression uh, at periods. And one thing that made a difference um, was knowing that we weren't alone in it because God was yeah. with us through it. And so yeah. um, how has your faith uh, made a difference in how you've, you guys have walked through kind of this hard season? Oh, I think, you know, that's, that's a big one, you know, and, you know, Isaiah 41 10 talks about that, you know, that we don't have to fear because God is with us. He's there. He's going to uphold us all the time. And so knowing I have this constant presence mm -hmm. and that I'm not suffering alone, especially like I had mentioned, my childhood was so much loneliness. It was so much suffering alone. Like this was a big one for me to learn. And it's still a big one for me that I need to be reminded of constantly because it's not an automatic mm -hmm. this is not my default my natural default is to be self-dependent yeah and when you're dealing with things like chronic pain even it was a process learning how to allow my husband to be a resource for me it's still a process for me to allow god to just sit there and be present with me you know to to accept and receive the peace that he gives us despite my circumstances that is such a gift. And there's so many things, you know, Jesus tells us, come to me, you know, with your weariness, and he's going to be the one that provides rest and all these truths of scripture. And they all just hit me. I'm not going to remember all the verses and exactly where they came from and, you know, them verbatim word for word, but I know the truth of scripture and that's it. God is faithful. Mm -hmm. He's with me and I'm not in this on my own. No. And that's actually the challenge. We can know the truth. We can, mm -hmm. we, we need to lean on the truth despite how we feel, but sometimes our feelings go, this isn't working. Our feelings are, yeah. you know, God's not with us. Our feelings say that God's not going to, nothing's going to change. And then mm -hmm. it's just going to be like this, but we really got to hold tight to the truths because mm -hmm. our, our feelings are going to lie to us. Right. They're going to lie right. to us a lot. Yeah. So, so uh, kind of this, this challenge that you're going through or any challenges really allow you to either depend more on God and each other or, mm -hmm. or not. And like you said, it's, it's that making that choice um, mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I'm not strong enough for this. <laughs> like, okay, I am not. And, you know, in my situation, I, I don't even have the helps of doctors. Mm -hmm. You know, they can't figure me out either. And that's what I fall back on. I'm like, you know, the Lord knows what it is. He's the mm -hmm. one who designed and made my body. He didn't mess it up just because I deal with pain, just because I have issues. That's not a mistake on God's behalf. Mm -hmm. There's purpose in it and there's reason for it. And I, and I don't say that lightly. Even if we don't see it right away. Right. Yeah. Because that's the thing, you know, it's like if somebody loses a loved one, it's like, well, they're in a better place or God has a person, God must've needed this. No, God has a, he, he has a plan 
And there is purpose in everything. And that's not just a flippant response. That is a a truth. Mm -hmm. That is something, you know what, that purpose, I may not ever see it. Mm -hmm. I may not ever like it. (laughs) I may not (laughs) ever understand it. But knowing God and knowing that he does not do anything without purpose and that he makes no mistakes, that's what allows me to walk in this and and be able to do it knowing it's not for, for nothing. Right. Oh, that's such a good word today. I know. I tell you, when God gets you to the end of yourself, sometimes you see more of them of Him than you were ever able to before. And so, there's so mm-hmm. many gifts in that. Even though, wow, it's not easy. Um, and I was just thinking about, you know, from talking to other couples too who are going through just really tough situations. And it might not be a health situation. It could be a parenting issue or a financial problem or a really um, Rocky career season or you name it. I mean, marriages get hit from all sides for all different things, but it can start to seem like life revolves around the struggle, right? So a health issue like you're talking about, it really could probably hijack your identity and start to to define who you are. So Mm -hmm. how can a husband and wife keep chronic pain or just a persistent issue from taking over every part of their life together? Okay, well, you know, you're so right because chronic pain is a thief. Mm-hmm. You know, marriage problems, stressors, all of that, they are thieves. They will come in and they will steal your normal. They will steal, you know, from your marriage. They'll steal your schedule. They'll steal, you know, my future. You know, I'm constantly worried about what my future is going to be like. And if I don't take those thoughts captive and make them obedient to Christ, I'm going to be in trouble real quick. Yeah, I'm going to start blaming my illness or blaming the job loss, blaming, you know, whatever my husband's doing for my situations. And that what I'm going to focus on then is the pain. And when we focus on pain, in fact, whatever we focus on, we magnify yeah. and we make it better. And what I can tell you is that all throughout scripture, God tells us to pursue joy 500 times. Like that is a huge deal. And that is where, I mean, in our marriage ministry, enjoy the journey is our tagline. And that's not just enjoy the journey when things are good. (laughs) Enjoy the journey when you both have got, you know, both have good incomes and life is working and there's no pain. It's enjoy the journey. And it doesn't mean there's not room for sadness. There's not room for grief or frustration. There's room for Mm -hmm. all of that. Because he also made us human and he gave us all of those emotions too. Yeah, he said, weep with those who weep, rejoice with those who rejoice. It's Mm -hmm. it's part of the human experience. We're supposed to be experiencing those things. Right. And so the first, I think the foundational thing, you know, to deal with hard times is keep your focus on joy Mm -hmm. and know that it can be there. You know, that joyful heart is good medicine. And so knowing that things can be bad and we can have joy in them Mm -hmm. is a great balance to strike. But for me, and I think in any situation where it is difficult, you got to be realistic about things too. Yeah. Where when God says, you know, to seek that joy and, and to seek peace and all that, it's not, he's not saying, don't worry about anything else. Ignore all of that and just feel this. Mm -hmm. No, we're allowed to feel grief. And be sad. I can get mad. And I think it's it's beneficial sometimes for me to sit there and have my crying fest. Oh, yeah. To sit there and talk with my husband about this is so frustrating Mm -hmm. and to grieve some of the losses we've experienced. And so you have to be real about how things impact you. Mm -hmm. And then you have to shift back to truth. Yeah, that's a good point. The grieving. Mm -hmm. Uh, There there is definitely is a grieving process that's involved with that. Uh, That part of having proper expectations, uh, despite how much I hate this term, I really, Mm -hmm. I guess, hate strong. How much I uh, dislike the term term of new normal. Mm -hmm. uh, That is is a reality of, you know, of of accepting Mm -hmm. that this, this, that things have changed and this is where we're at. Mm. God willing, all of us live together long enough, there will be changes and new normals of that we will mm-hmm. be going through. I mean, you know, it's, it's just, even if we didn't have chronic pain and all that, the differences of what we'd be doing in our 50s versus our 30s would have oh, adjusted. I'm tired, y'all. I'm way more tired. Getting around our grandkids, it's one of those things like, okay, now we remember why we had our kids early. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. But that is that is a challenge, you know. So, so a, a grieving that it's okay to grieve what mm-hmm. won't have, you know, won't ever be able to come to pass. It's okay to grieve that you're not able to do these things, but then be thankful for the things that we can do. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I guess what I'm thinking is we don't have to put on a face, we don't have to put mm-hmm. on a show, we don't have to to always be well. I'm going to be happy today. Well, no, because God doesn't say we have to do that. Joy doesn't depend upon our happiness. Mm-hmm. You know, you can you know be angry angry, but just don't sit in our anger, but then make a choice to go back to joy, feel mm-hmm. the feels, deal with the feels, right? Um, I don't know. It's just, it's just, it, it is a challenge. And Jamie was saying something about, you know, that crying and all that as so part of a caretaker, right? Just understanding that that's a, a there's mm-hmm. a venting and emotional processing yeah. times. You don't need to rush in and fix it all the time. Right. Actually, mm-hmm. the challenge from that is a lot of caretakers will take it personally, even if, look, even if it's not, a, you know, the, the chronic pain, just to, if a spouse is, is venting. Sometimes the other spouse takes it personally and then they, it becomes about them and, and about something completely different. But when Jamie's having those crying times where I can just listen and not try to fix it, because look, my the messaging, if I try to fix it, if I could try to make things, you know, change things is kind of says, look, you can't be this way around me. You need to change in order to be around me because mm-hmm. that's not acceptable. I don't like when you're like this mm-hmm. versus I'll bear your burdens with yeah. you. I'll be here regardless of what ha- what's going on. Yeah. And I think in Galatians 6, 2, you know, that verse about carrying each other's burdens and it says, and then you will fulfill the law of Christ. And I think sometimes it's easier for the person who is carrying the burdens of their spouse, because that feels holy, that feels right, that's I can show up and be God in your life. But that verse, it requires two positions in that, because in order to carry somebody's burdens, on the other side of that is somebody sharing them. Mm. And so that's the harder position. None of us want to be on that side where it is even, you know what, I don't have a job and I need your help with my resume. I don't, I don't have money and we need to ask my parents for some help or I have chronic pain and I can't do 90% of the things I used to be able to do. Me being in that position of being more needy or in a time or in a lifetime of need is also equally helping fulfill the law of Christ Mm. because he can't Mm. do his part and others can't do their part. The church can't do their part of carrying my burdens if I take them all on myself. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you you say a lot of, uh, you said, you guys said a lot of uh, really good, profound truth there. Um, one thing I really appreciate, though, is your focus on on joy, too, because I think mm. you're right. I think when we make it about happiness, then a lot of times that's when we get into trouble as couples, because then your negative emotions all of a sudden take away from my happiness. But with, <laughs> yes. with joy, you can still have your feel, like you said, you can still mourn, you can still grieve, you can still have those emotions, but you can find uh, a sense of peace and joy together. And it allows you to talk about your most emotions with each other because you're, you're trying to find a fulfillment of joy, not happiness. And so your, your challenges and struggles don't get in the way of, of my joy. I can still have that even when you're struggling or I'm struggling. Um, yeah. so, right. so I appreciate that. Yeah. And I think in those moments when it's more than just happiness, even when I am, like he's saying, crying and sharing and all of that, and he's listening and empathizing and just saying, you know, I hate this for you. I mean, I would love it if I could fix this for you. And I hate that I can't. This really stinks. You're going through this. Man, how much joy is in is there to be found in the fact that I have a husband leaning into my deepest pain, leaning into my struggles and saying, I'm here, I'm in this with you. That's something to be joyful about right there. Yeah, we're not excellent. We're together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I found myself on a ledge three stories high at some condominiums, contemplating my life and struggling to understand my purpose. Have you ever found yourself on the ledge? My name is Billy Yates. I'm a caring father, mentor, and friend. In my new podcast, Billy and the Goat, I share the life-changing events that shaped who I am today to remind you that no matter how far you've fallen, God can help you get up and thrive. Listen now at lifeaudio.com. 
It's a crazy world out there, moms and dads, and raising our kids to stand strong in the faith is tough. I'm Katherine Seegers, host of Christian Parent Crazy World, a podcast that answers the questions that keep us parents up at night. Questions like, um, is it okay to question God and the Christian faith? How do I help my kids to have an authentic faith? Wait wait a second, is the Bible just a book written by some ancient dead guys? <laughs> yeah, for answers to these questions and more, subscribe to Christian Parent Crazy World at lifeaudio.com. What I hear you say is that the spiritual becomes evident in the practical. I mean, very much so, especially in marriage. And so chronic pain or health issues are going to have an impact on how one spouse serves the other in the, in the daily. And like, I'm thinking about Rob, um, Rob gives me a huge amount of grace for naps. (laughs) Because I mean, there's been a lot of times when I needed at least one nap a day just to make it to bedtime. And um, talk about something that came back a hundredfold. That 20 minute nap makes (laughs) makes her a nicer person. (laughs) Yeah. But but he, he would give me room for that and not be like, oh my gosh, you're crashing out again. You know, all of that kind of thing. And so it's such a small thing, but just being kind of given that permission and that grace to just rest when I need it really has meant a lot to me. But I would be very interested um, to hear some of just the really practical, tangible ways that you help each other out and that you encourage each other in your day to day. There are um, lots of ways like Christopher decided like long ago that, you know, my steps are limited, you know, they're limited. And so he decided like he chose an attitude of grace and an attitude of servanthood. And it's like, you know what, when Jamie forgets something, I'm going to walk and go get it. I'm going to do the things and like pulling the car up and carrying everything. And so his heart for servanthood towards me is it's just gigantic. And I don't think that's, you know, that's not natural for somebody to do. Mm -hmm. And so doing those things and, you know, like we were talking about before, allowing the time to just have a hard day and to just take a nap. And it really is about you've got to look at your life. And be real about it and identify, you know, what are the things that I need from my husband? And for you, it was, I need the grace to have the 20 minute nap. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be different for other people. I need the grace to have the breakdowns because if I don't eventually vent all this pent up emotion, I end up really angry and irritable and frustrated all the time, you know? And so it depends circumstantially what you're needing. But I think one of the biggest things is we make room for fun. Mm -hmm. Like this guy is so fun and (laughs) we just, I can't, I can't do the things I used to do, but we have been intentional about finding things that we can do that are fun and that are fulfilling. And even just going for a drive, allowing me space to just get in the car and roam and free think and just, you know, have quiet environment around me or worship music you know, creating an environment that is helpful because when you're dealing with pain or even under a season of stress, lots of commotion and unstructure and chaos, that really adds to things. And and that's where it's also so important to pursue that joy because the more joy we have, and I think this is one of the biggest reasons why, why God tells us all the time to, you know, keep that joy and to continually walk in joy because joy, he's made a part of our brain, literally a physical part of my, our brain that holds our joy. And that is a part of our brain that can grow as big as it needs unlimited to grow, capacity. unlimited capacity. And the higher that is, the more joy we have, the easier it is to handle the stressors. Mm-hmm. The more joy I have, the easier I can handle pain, the easier I can handle things that come up. And so that's a big part of it. And so I think a great way to help a spouse is to add some of that joy in, is to add some of that fun back in. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I was just thinking when you're talking about that with the spouse and the pain, it also reminds me of a, of a study where um, where spouses, wives were going through a, a procedure that caused them pain. And by the husbands being there holding their hand, it, it would, you know, but they saw brain results that a, there was a marked reduce in the amount of pain they experienced. For the ones mm. that had husbands to hold their hands. Versus yeah, just do. being present in physical contact. Yeah. Wow, that's fascinating. Mm-hmm, for sure. Um, well, you know, I'm sure that there are some couples listening today who actually aren't dealing with a health issue or a chronic illness right now, but 
life is unpredictable, right? Mm -hmm. So um, what can we be doing today in our marriages to prepare us for troubles that might hit us down the road? You can be communicating. Mm -hmm. And that is the biggest thing. You need to make time, you know, to talk about the real things, to even just, and, and it doesn't always have to be heavy, but have habits in your life because it's your, you know, we get caught up on these big goals and motivations for our marriage and big lofty things, but really what directs our paths the most are our daily habits. So, and if we're waking up, you know, forming habits that are apart from one another, we're going to start that drift. And so really just forming habits of good morning, honey, mm -hmm. let's have our cup of coffee together. Let's do a devotion together. Let's text each other or call throughout the day, che checking in with one another and just establishing communication and also being honest when you have those hard days. Yeah. Well, giving the other person to a opportunity to serve you by bearing your burdens. Right. And just having the mindset of next to God, we're one another's greatest resource. Yeah. And it's so easy because our natural default is very self-protective. Mm -hmm. And if we can shift that and go, you know, let me bring my spouse in that. How do I also protect him? How am I also a resource for them? And, and instead of, you know, him coming home with this hard day and me saying, well, you have no idea how hard mine was, mm -hmm. you know, having that changing that mindset of, you know, my day was so hard. Tell me about it. What happened? What made it hard? Like leaning into each other's daily, like little pains and their interest and all of those things and just coming alongside them, forming that friendship, a friendship. If, you know, couples were surveyed, couples that have been married 50 years or longer, their number one answer to their success in marriage was that their, their spouse was their best friend. Yeah. And so what you can do today is keep your friendship alive. Sure. Keep your friendship alive. Well, and I was even thinking too, because you know, that this there is this question as far as, you know, as being a caretaker, you know, and Jamie, you know, mentioned, you know, that you're only doing, you know, or can't do 90% of what you used mm -hmm. to do. And you know, of course, you know, that that allows me to be all righteous and look at me <laughs> being the servant and look at how my treasures of heaven. But you know what, even if that's not the case. I should still have a servant's heart. Yes. So if you don't, that's a great mm. place to start to get a mindset for a servant's heart now before you mm -hmm. get to that. There's, you know, this, this concept of, of, you know, all, is there, you know, are we doing the same amount of stuff for each other? Is the it 50-50 50 now? Yeah, is it fair and all that? No. Grace, it's no life is not fair. There, there, that's why there, why there's grace and we should have a, a make room for grace and abundant grace. Mm. Um, you know, if, it's yeah, the 50 50 Ecclesiastes, you know, four nine talks about two are better than one. If one falls down, the other one's there to help you up. Well, you know, come on, you're not doing your work. You know, you got to help me up. You got to meet me halfway. No, you, you're there to help, help them up, help them up. So it's, it's not fair. There's not a balance where, you know, we're not promised a balance in a relationship and we shouldn't be looking for one. I mean, because that goes against first Corinthians 13, four through nine, you know, because love keeps no records of wrongs. Mm. So, you know, we don't want to be, you know, to have that mindset, even if both people are well and high functioning, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, all that kind of stuff. We need to make sure that we're already having this mindset of how can we better, how can we outserve each other? How can we outlove mm -hmm. each other? Mm -hmm. You know, it's if, if, you're, if healthy competition, maybe, I don't know, um, you know, as far as like, but what can I do to serve and love you better today than I did yesterday, mm -hmm. despite you know, uh, if you're loving, you know, right. if, if you're meeting me halfway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. I love that. That is just a profound thing that you said that the goal is not to have a balance in your relationship. Mm -hmm. That is really, I'm going to be sitting with that for a while. Yeah. I yeah. love <laughs> that. I love that. Um, and I know um, you're not just encouraging me, but just in the course of all of the work that you do, you are serving couples in so many different contexts who are dealing with just a wide variety of roadblocks to their joyful marriage. And you have created just some tremendous resources. Um, and one of those is your Restoring Connection course. And I would love to hear more about that so that our friends can keep learning from you even after our time together today. Oh, and that, you know, that's one of the things that what we were talking about exactly is making those daily habits. And that course, we designed that to do exactly what it's called to restore connection. 
And it's a series. It's a four week plan. It includes four videos, one a week, and you get questions every day. And it's going to take you 10 minutes or less to have these questions. And they're just connecting. Some of them each week has a different focus. Sometimes it's fun. Sometimes it's more about learning to listen and different activities that you do, but it's really, it's 10 minutes a day. And I don't think so many people understand that you can totally change your marriage with those small daily habits and those 10 minute connecting points. And so that's what that's all about. That's great. Yeah. I, another one that, um, that I know we talked about more on the first program that we'd love resource you have is, uh, your newlyweds couple devotional. Mm. Um, and that's, you know, that is rocking it on Amazon, I have to say. I mean, it's <laughs> it's totally outpacing Mr. and Mrs. Couple devotional that we have, and I'm not oh. jealous at all. I'm not bitter. I, I'm happy for you guys because it's an awesome resource. All of it together. It is, That's and right. we have we have it's young married kids, and no, we're just so glad. Like, wow, if I wish we'd had this resource when we were starting out. So we're just so excited about what you guys are doing. Well, thank Thanks you so, so much. much. We appreciate it. We're all in this together and just growing the kingdom and, and strengthening the body of Christ. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. a lot of hurting people out mm-hmm. there, a lot of hurting marriages, and that needs all of us. It needs more. Yeah, we mm-hmm. need more of it. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I know um, there's probably friends listening today who are, are feeling pretty worn out and uh, might feel like giving up in, in their relationship right now. Um, would you be willing to pray for them, um, that God will give them what they need to keep going and, and draw closer to each other in, in the, the joys and the struggles of, of life and marriage. Yeah, I'd be honored to. Thank you. Uh, Father God, I just want to thank you for this opportunity to, to be able to, to reach people who, who are hurting, who are stressed, who are challenged. Uh, Father, you, you said in this world, we will have tribulation. You, you called it. It was not an, an if. And, um, but we have you mm-hmm. and you, you would always be a resource for us. You would never leave or forsake us. And so I just pray through these times, through these challenges that we do lean in closer into you. Uh, you are our shelter in the storms. You, you're, um, you're our cover and you love us so dearly and you want so much for us, despite how we might feel, despite if we don't understand your purposes and plans at the time, we know that your truths are stand the test. And that you do want the best for us um, and, and the best for your kingdom, the best for our marriages. We do pray that you allow for this stress to push us closer to you, push us closer to each other, that we share you know, burdens with each other, that we share burdens with the, with you, and that we just allow um, one another to be that resource that you've given to enter into our lives, the sacred resource that you brought into there. So I just pray, Father, that there's just that you just fill us with your joy, that it's, it is your joy that is our strength, um, that, that we can have this abundant life that you want so badly for us, that we can change our focus upon um, on the ways we can have a joy despite our circumstances, despite the struggles, um, that, that we can just have it together and look at each other you know, in this joyful way and not a way of, of are they coming up and, and doing their fair share of having joy, uh, but be maybe joy for them in those times. And we just love you so much. We just want to honor and, and, and praise you in the ways that we love, the ways that we have joys and the things that we say. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm, amen. Thank you so much for that. Um, and before we close, you, you already told us about your awesome course and the idea that 10 minutes a day can just be so powerful. Uh, where can everybody go to learn about your books and your courses and connect with you online? Everything is on our website, which is expeditionmarriage.org. Um, we're primarily over on Instagram, but we have all the links and all the resources to our courses and our books. And we have free, you know, husband and wife prayer challenges and all kinds of things like that on our site as well. But expeditionmarriage.org is probably the best place you're going to find us. Great. Great. And yeah, you do have to check out the Instagram uh, page because you guys have a lot of fun reels and do all kinds of fun stuff. And and it's also very uh, resourceful too. So mm-hmm. um, check that out for sure. And, and thanks so much, Chris and Jamie, for, for talking to us today. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you guys for having us. Yeah, this has been great. 
And and thank you, friends, for joining us here at the Growing Home Together podcast. We would love to connect with you over on our site at growinghometogether.com. You're going to find all kinds of resources for your family, whether it's conversation cards or devotionals or books to just help you get into prayer together as a couple. Um, yeah, we just, just love to serve you in that way. And I know we're going to be praying for you uh, Jamie for your ongoing healing and we just love to pray with our friends so just reach out any anytime everybody at Growing Home Together we are caring for the soul of your family and growing home together with you bye bye <laughs>